Hello, sir. I have decided to read a book from every country in the world. Why? Um, because I thought it would be fun and interesting, and I I love exploring places from the comfort of my own home. This just seemed like a really cool, fun idea, and as you can see, I have perhaps um, been a little extra. And I've made a spreadsheet. I've made a spreadsheet. It's a um. It's pretty comprehensive. So what is this challenge? It was first done by a British woman whose name I cannot remember off the top of my head, but she is a TED talk or something. I might link it in the doobly-doo. Yeah, and she first did it and some people have been doing it like since on YouTube and various places. Um, and I thought it would be very cool to try myself. So I, um, spent a completely unreasonable amount of time researching world literature and this is the resulting this is my resulting spreadsheet it is beautiful i love it uh it's also you know a little much but it has all the basic informa information that i need to know if you would like to perhaps use this as a starting place for undertaking this challenge yourself i'll put a link to it in the description and you can you'll obviously need to make some changes because you know your library will not have what my library has etc etc but yeah let's i'll take you through it and we can have a look so the first column is just the country uh whereas you may ask how did you decide which countries to include and which countries to not include various countries are not countries according to other countries etc etc i've basically just gone with the um United Nations recognized states and then I've included Taiwan, Palestine, and Kosovo. I'm not sure if if uh, those are recognized or not. I don't I think Taiwan maybe isn't. Anyway, this is my list. It's it's missing it's missing um, Scotland and Wales and uh, Northern Ireland and England. I've just done the UK, but I feel like this is kind of fine because the kind of point of this challenge is to not read from authors from the UK and the USA um, and Australia, which are the three main kind of places that I read from when I'm not doing something like this. Anyway, if there's a country that's not here that you feel like should be here, express your thoughts and feelings in the comments and I may listen and include it, but we'll we'll see. This is, this is the basic list, uh, don't fight me. The next column is source, which is kind of the most, one of the most important things because um, this is, whether or not I have access to this book. So I have a few different categories. The first one is audio. Audio A means is av available on Audible. The only one, I think, this one, Granada, is uh, available in the Plus catalog, but all the other ones I think I have to buy. So if you know of alternatives, alternative books for these countries that are not these books, um, that'd be great if you could leave suggestions because I do not want to have to spend money. <laughs> uh, I will spend some money, but I don't want to have to spend however many credits that is. Uh, the next category is Audio L, which is available on Libby as an audiobook, so that's all free, that's all good. Um, Kindle. The Teacher of Cheops for Andorra and Reading the Ceiling for the Gambia were both with Kindle Unlimited so I could get them on a free trial, which I did, and I have read both of those. Uh, and then Kosovo, uh, Who Will Slay the Wolf? Some poetry from Kosovo was, I think like maybe $3 or something. So there are, there are some books that are pretty cheap on Kindle and that's probably the way I'm gonna read them. However, it's maybe my least favorite way to read a book. I don't have a Kindle, I just use my phone, so it's not, you know, great for the eyeballs. It's good for, for obscure things that I could not otherwise get my hands on. Uh, the next category, library, is quite large, quite extensive. Uh, I have a very good public library. Very cool to have access to uh, all of these countries just through that. Then we have Shelf, which is just books that I own. And I found these, either I had them already, or I found them in op shops, or I bought them, or I've received them as gifts. So these are, these are books that I own that have been sourced from various places, but mostly that um, I just kind of had already. And then unsourced. These are the countries that I need your help with, uh, because I do not have them and my library does not have them and Audible does not have them. 
and Libby does not have them. I won't read them all out because there's a lot of them, but these countries here in this column. If you have suggestions for a book other than the books listed um, that I could read that may be more available, that'd be cool. Leave suggestions. There's some pretty like small obscure places, so I expect I may just have to buy books for some of these, but it would be cool if I could find some at the library or in various other places. That'd be cool. Um, so that's those countries there. Then we've got um, the author and the title, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, these are just the books that I have found that I've picked to read for each country. Uh, and then we have original language. Now, something that I found very interesting that I did not expect to be as difficult as it was um, is finding the original language of a text online listed is like not a thing like it'll it'll have translated into english by so and so but it won't say from what language it was translated which i find really weird so some of these i've just made educated guesses because it's like listed as a translated text but i can't figure out like for example the teacher of cheops the book that everyone reads for Andorra. Couldn't figure out if it was written in Catalan or Spanish. It said online that the author wrote in both Catalan and Spanish, so I don't know what the original language of the text was, so I've just put them both there, made a guess. Uh, it's one of those. Yeah, we've got a really cool uh, variety of languages, Albanian, Ancient Greek, lots of Arabic, uh, Bahasa, Bengali, Bulgarian, Chinese, Croatian, Danish, Dutch, a lot of English, obviously, uh, Finnish, French, German, Lots of French, uh, and then a bunch of bunch of others. Portuguese, Russian, Spanish has a lot. There's some cool, slightly obscure languages here, like Latvian and Creole and that kind of thing, which is cool. Uh, genre got some biography, got a lot of classics actually. A few crime fiction, a few fantasy, one graphic novel, lots of historical fiction, just an obscene amount of historical fiction, which really is not typically my favorite genre, but, you know, we, we, <laughs> we're gonna be reading a lot of it and that's all right. Literary fiction is kind of just what I wrote when I couldn't really figure out which genre it was, so there's a lot of that too. Lots of memoirs for, particularly for slightly more obscure nations where there's maybe not as much literature coming out of them, but maybe some, like, personal stories. Uh, so memoirs, some mystery, which is cool, and a lot of non-fiction, then some poetry, some romance, sci-fi, short stories, thriller, and then travel, mm, which is kind of code for white men gets bored of mundane existence and goes to exotic location and writes memoir with slightly funny title about it. That's kind of the genre that, that most of these are. Um, and I've tried to avoid those books as much as possible. I, I would prefer to read, for example, Kiribati. This is, this is a memoir by a dude who was like actually a colonizer. Like, straight up went there to colonize. And I would obviously prefer to read a book by an actual inhabitant and not some dude who just showed up and was like, this is Britain now. But a lot of the times it's very difficult to find a book like that. And sometimes these travel books, uh, the only thing that I can find. Uh, so that's just how it'd be. Number of pages. I mean, not super interesting, but I just thought I'd keep track of it. Uh, year published, I thought was cool. So I, I made a column for that too. We've got uh, a lot of a lot of classics, as previously mentioned. Some stuff pre World War II, some stuff in the fifties and sixties, uh, but it's mostly kind of modern, more modern texts. Post two thousand, I'd say is like maybe half. So yeah, there's a good there's a good range, but it is mostly contemporary. And then status rating out of a hundred and summary, I've got like a little short kind of sentence just to like remind myself what the book is about once I've read 190 something of them. And this is just the order that I've read them in and then a rating out of 100. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. 
that's my insane spreadsheet. I hope you uh, enjoyed looking at it. It is very beautiful, color coded. Uh, nothing too fancy. It's just like a Google Sheet. I'll leave a link. You can edit it as much as you desire. But mostly, if you have recommendations for books that I do not have for these red ones or these pink ones, you could leave them in the comments. That would be phenomenal. I would appreciate it very, very much. Uh, because it is tough. It is tough to find books from some of these places, you know? Some of them I've had to resort to, like, books set in the place. Like, non-fiction stuff, stuff written by people not from the country. I've just done the best that I can. And I think- I think I've done okay. Thank you very much for watching. I will be making some various reading vlogs, uh, and that kind of thing of a lot of these books, I would imagine, in the future, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, see you later.